Welcome to Massachusetts Historical Swordsmanship's Art of the Rapier, Chapter 2, in which we're going to cover definitions and basic movements. 2.1 Sal Etiquette. Please review the relevant section of the book for this. Section 2.2 Technical Terms. 2.2.1 Tempo. Following Aristotle's physics, a tempo is the duration of a single motion. Here, Brian's invitation is one tempo. Brian's advance is two tempi, or footfalls. 2.2.1.1 Scale to tempo. This is the judgment of time. Here, Audrey is timing her hit, which is one tempo, to Brian's advance. 2.2.2 .2, Distance or Misura in Italian. Here, Ryan is at a distance for Audrey's lunge. 2.2.2 Now he's at her lunge distance. Now he's at her firm footed lunge distance. Here he's at extension distance. Finally, we have infighting or grappling distance. 2.2.3 Velocity. This is simply rate over time. 2.2.4 Judgment. We can define this as efficiency in your actions and also when to act. 2.2.5 Offensive actions, attacks, and feints. An offensive action seeks to strike the adversary. A simple attack takes one tempo. A compound or feint attack takes more than one tempo. 2.2.6 Preparatory Actions This is any action made to facilitate the offense, like an engagement or a beat, etc. 2.2.7 Engagement, Opposition, and Pressure Engagement, or stringeri, is the basic preparatory action. You reach forward to cover the opponent's blade so that they can't attack you without going around your own blade. A sweep is a circular action, seeking the adversary's blade on the inside or the outside to give them a tempo in which to make a disengagement. 2.2.8 Thrust and Cuts Two items of terminology. A forehand cut is a mandrito, and a backhand cut is a reverso. 2.2.9 Line. You can think of these as possible vectors of attack relative to the sword. Here Brian has his high outside closed and then his high inside. Here his low outside and his low inside. If his sword is above his head, everything is his low line. If he drops his point, then again we have low outside, low inside. 2.3 Pronation and supination. This is simply the hand position. Here pronated, and here supinated. 2.4 The Salute The salute is a traditional point of etiquette and is properly done with the mask off. In order to perform the salute, one raises the crossbar of the rapier to the level of one's lips, extends over the partner's head, and then swishes down inside to outside. 2.5 Garden Hand Positions these are numbered from drawing the blade from the scabbard. First, second, third, fourth, half circle, and the head guard. From the front, first, drop slightly to second, lower the hand to third, close the inside to fourth, half circle drops the point from fourth, and then the head guard. In first, the hand is past pronation. In second, it's pronated. In third, it's halfway between pronation and supination. In fourth, it's supinated. In half circle, it continues to be supinated. And in the head guard, past pronation. To find the proper guard position, you can come on guard against the wall. If your outside line is against the wall, then it must be closed. The same applies to your inside line. 
stand with your inside against the wall and come on guard and forth. Here for completeness are two different views. 2.6 Stance I describe this more fully in the book, but it's important to be in a knees bent position. 2.7 Drawing the sword There are a couple of methods for doing this. With the right foot forwards, you can draw back the front foot and then take another pass back to come to guard. With the left foot forwards, you can simply pass back with the left foot to clear the sword from the scabbard. 2.8 Footwork First, 2.8.1, the advance. Here the front foot steps forward, followed by the rear foot. The gather step is a variation of this. 2.8.2, the retreat. The rear foot steps back, followed by the front foot. Again, you can do gather steps as a variation of this. 2.8.3, diagonal advances and retreats. Make sure to move the foot on the side you're moving to first. 2.8.4, the crossover. This enables you to cover more ground while keeping your sword side forwards. Make sure not to swing the hips. 2.9, extension. This is simply unbending your elbow without engaging your shoulder. 2.9.1, extension with the lean. You can extend and sink back in order to load your rear leg. 2.10, the firm footed lunge. Conversely, you can extend and increase your reach by leaning forwards onto your front foot. 2.11, the lunge. This is a complex action, but one extends loads the rear leg, and lunges forwards. 2.12, the recovery. The lunge is only complete by the return to guard. You can also, of course, lunge back as an invasion. Here's some common faults in making the lunge. First, Brian is leaning to the inside, throwing his balance off. Here, he's misaligning his knee and toe, leaning to stress on the joint. Here, he's leaning too far forwards, falling forwards. Here, he's rolling his ankle, risking injuring it. And here, he's pushing off his toe, which tends to make him unbalanced to the front. In this case, he's dropping his hand, which leaves his face uncovered. And here, he's moving his foot and then his hand in an uncoordinated fashion. 2.12.1, forwards recovery. It's also conceivable from a lunge to recover forwards into guard. Or 2.12.2, you can redouble. That is, make a lunge and then staying low, make another lunge. 2.13, attack on the pass. The attack on the pass is really nothing more than a lunge with the rear foot. You can also do this as a renewed attack, say from the lunge. 2.14, the gain on the lunge. Brian is going to gain some more ground by bringing his rear foot up before he lunges. You can also do this from an advance. 2.15, the running attack. This is simply the classical flesh. Brian extends out, loads his rear foot, and then pushes off of it into an explosive attack that carries the distance of an advanced lunge. 2.16, voids. 
Note that if you move to the outside, close to the inside, always move the hand first, and vice versa. Here's the compass drill with the first foot. I can lunge forward, closing to my inside to the outside. I can lunge at 45 degree angle to the inside, the intagliata. I can slip my leg back, that is a stop hit or half pass back. And I can move my forward foot to the outside, either 90 or 45 degrees. Rear foot. I can move my rear foot in a pass forward. I can pass forward 45 degrees. I can pass left 90 degrees. I can lunge back. And I can do the various incartadas from 45 degrees all the way up to 180 degrees. Here's the same exercise seen from my inside. and from my outside. A few last things for completeness. 2.17, the jump back. This is simply a leap or a spring backwards to evade the adversary. 2.18, tactical footwork. Because this gets complex, see the book and we'll cover it in the proper context.